All right, UFC 191 is Saturday. I'm ready. There's only one guy, really, that's probably more ready than me, and you'll see him at UFC 191. It's Frank Mir. Frank, welcome to the show, man. Hey, it's great to be here. Thank you. Dude, first of all, let me tell you, there's there's not a whole lot of guys in any division who seem to enjoy themselves as much as you seem to enjoy yourself when you're in the midst of a cage fight, and you're getting in there with Arlovsky this, uh, this Saturday night. Uh, first of all, You've been doing this for a long time, the longest tenured active fighter in the UFC. Does it get any easier to get through a training camp and get to fight week like it is now? Well, you know, yes and no. You know, the times that, uh, you know, this quick turnaround fighting in almost less than 60 days was a little bit on the difficult side. But, you know, the good thing is, is I have people around me that really support, you know, my wife's been doing this for 14 years, you know. Uh, with me, so she really knows how to help me out and be the best role, you know, support uh, mode that you can possibly be in. My coaches, my friends, my family members, everybody around me really, really encompasses everything around and really helps me out. Uh, even my sponsors, you know, uh, guys that help me out, you think it's just on a financial status, you know, are able to do more than that. You know, like if I need, you know, somebody to bring me over something, guys show up. I have guys picking my kids up from school when I uh, have an obligation that I can't break from and you know, really everybody around me at this point, you know, because I've been doing this for so long, really knows how it works. So it's not like I'm getting into sport and the people around me are also learning how to how to deal with being, me being a fighter. Not only have I learned how to, you know, live this lifestyle, but the people around me have really just, you know, taken it up and understand it, and they're veterans also. That's all. Well, you know, and you mentioned the turnaround. I mean, that's, I mean, the middle of July, We la- I'm sitting there watching your fight, and I thought, okay, well, you know, maybe we'll see you before the year's out, and here you are in a huge fight. And in, in a top ten heavyweight matchup, I mean, is it uh, does that that short turnaround obviously does have its flaws and its problems? But are, are you happy to just be able to not have a long layoff and wait to find out who you're going to fight? I mean, that kind of turned around pretty quickly, obviously. Yeah, a little. I think a little bit longer of a layoff would have been nice, you know, uh, just because. Really, honestly, my kids probably suffered more than anybody, and, and they're happy and they don't say nothing, they don't complain. And it's not from what I noticed from them, but as a father, I realized. Look, I started training for uh, Duffy in the middle of May. So my kids this summer was daddy going to the gym. If they want to come with me, they can come with me. But us going on a camping trip and, and doing, you know, and getting away, it's hard. It was a rare occasion. And then so once the fight was over July 15th, I went to Disneyland for the weekend. But then that <laughs> Sunday or Monday when I got back, um, we found out that the camping trip that I've been planning for the last year for two weeks up in Washington uh, had to get canceled. And the kids, you know, they, they didn't cry about it. They didn't complain. As soon as mommy, you know, my wife's better at explaining it than I am because I sit there and you can just see that I'm guilt-ridden to take that away from the kids. And my wife is <laughs> right. much more, you know, uh, sure about it and just like, hey, daddy has to fight. This is what we have to do. And this is a family. We're going to get along with it. I'm looking at her and I, I want to cry because I'm disappointed a little bit at first. It took a little while to really get my brain in that mode. And that's when, again, I say that the people around me really stepped up and they're like, hey, man, you know, like, we can do this. Just get focused. Your kids aren't going to suffer. You know, we still have, you know, Christmas break and all the things that, you know, you winning this is going to do for them. Let's, uh, let's just, you know, get our head on straight and focus on what the positives of this are. And let's not look at the negatives. That's true. That, that does give you at least, the, you know, you, got, you know you have a solid holiday together where you probably won't be, be tra- get, having to be deep in training for a fight, I guess. That's probably a good thing. Uh, UFC 191 uh, Saturday. That's, that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, yeah, that's right. Frank Mir is with us. He is, uh, there's so many numbers that have been spit out by the most submissions in the in, in heavyweight division, all, the, all those great numbers. And it's, it's really remarkable just to kind of look back because I feel like I've grown up on the UFC with you. You know, like I started following you early on, and it's just it's, it's a, an amazing resurgence of your career. I got a, a buddy, Austin, who's your, who's your biggest fan, who, who emailed me a question, and he wanted me to ask just that. He wanted to say, you know, was there a specific turning point for you where it clicked and you said, ah, oh, I got this now. Is it, is, it a, is it a maturity with the game and with, you, with, with fighting with, that you have had to experience, or was it just a moment where things turned around for you outside of the octagon? No, I wish I could say it was that much of a, you know, I had a, an epiphany and a, and a moment I could point to and really use as a, you know, a teaching you know, tool to somebody else and say, this is what happened to me. But it really is just small steps. You know, you just, and every day you have moments of failure and moments of success. In everything you do, you know, you might go to the gym and you trained right, but then after the gym, you ate something you shouldn't have ate. So here you had some success, you had some failure. You had an argument with your wife that you shouldn't have said or done, and then all of a sudden you're with your friends and you make the right decision and go ahead and go home early. Success and failure. And so I just think it came down to where I was just having more successes in a day and in a week and in a month 
and I was having failures. And, and again, every time I have a failure, I try to look at it as a learning lesson and try to learn from it and move around and maneuver and, well, how can I improve upon this? And I'm humble enough to ask people for help all the time, you know, yeah. everything from how to be a fighter. I go to my coaches and I ask them, hey, how can I improve as a fighter? To other men that have been married for 20, 30 years, I'm like, hey, man, how did you do it? Like, how do you and your wife make it this long? You know, so I try to look for advice on how to be a better husband. And fathers, I'll be at a baseball game. I'll look over and see how a guy is treating his kid. And, you know, like, hey, you know, why do you do it this way? And why do you do that? And I'm always trying to learn and just absorb. And, and every day, I mean, really, that's what I tell my kids. When I wake up in the morning, my goal is that when I go to bed tonight, I'm a little bit better of a human being in all aspects of my life. That's awesome. Not just a better fighter, not just a better father, but just a better person. I love that, man. Now, now is that a, a, a not, not just mental toughness, but that belief in yourself and the way that you just described, when you are in the octagon, what is that, is, does that get easier? Does that get better because you've, you know, you've trained, you know you've got the right people around you, you've, prob- you know, you've looked at film and you've done all the things, but when you're in there, how big is that mental game in keeping yourself you know, steady through, through the rounds? No, it's helped me out immensely. I think that's an edge I've had now on a lot of my, you know, my last two opponents, and Duffy especially, is that I don't get worked up with everything around. I've now realized that fighting is fighting. I'm going to go in there and, you know, we're both going to try to impose our game plans on each other, and I don't think about, well, if I win this fight, what's going to go? And if I lose the fight, what's going to happen? And even during the fight, if the course of the fight I'm not doing well, I'm not sitting there, and I think the young version of me in my 20s would have been like, oh, my, I'm losing. Whereas now it's like, oh, I just got reversed in that position. Oh, it's because he set me up for this. Oh, he's coming this way. And so I purely get lost in the moment at hand. I'm lost in the technique. My brain is not thinking in the future. It's not thinking of the past. And I'm thinking of consequences. I'm just in the moment dealing with it. I tell people, it's like taking a math exam. If I put a bunch of numbers down, don't sit there and think about how many numbers are on the piece of paper. Do the problem that's at hand. You can't sit there and try to read ahead or count ahead because it'll slow you down. It'll cloud your mind. And that's something you can't have in our in our world of fighting there's too many ways to lose instantly you make a mistake so having a clear mind we're a mind like a mirror and just what's at hand is what's going on that's awesome uh, that's top 10 heavyweight contender frank Mir, ufc 191 saturday night in vegas you got D- johnson and dodson too but everybody wants to see this heavyweight showdown between you and andre and, and I, I don't know how you know how many friends you have in the business and guys that you would fight, but what you know what do you what do you see in him that you think makes this uh, maybe not an easy fight for you, but exploitable? Well, I think they have a size advantage and a little bit of advantage in grappling. I think that he's a great boxer, has great footwork and great mobility, but I'm a bigger, stronger guy, and uh, I think that once I can put my weight on him and bear down on him, I can slow him down. And if Andre slows down or stands in front of me, I think I'm a, you know, a very powerful puncher and I can you know, put him down. And so once I get him to stop moving as much as he moves and uh, stand and, and fight and exchange up close, kind of how I fought with Duffy and, and big footwork, throwing combinations and head movement and footwork, but within boxing range, I think I'll do very well. Oh. I think while he's moving around and kicking range and the A range and in and out, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. He has an advantage there as far as he's lighter on his feet and likes to move. Do you find you uh, come up with any new tools in your uh, in your bag for you know in training? This training camp, the guys that you surround yourself with, does that help you come up with stuff that you, maybe you haven't been able to try out before that you're maybe looking to to add to the repertoire on Saturday? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the only thing is, I mean, there's things that I've actually been training for the last two fights yep. it ended quickly that you know I didn't get to really display and use, and so I just basically keep sharpening them and get them ready, and hopefully that you know. Once someone now, you know, gets past the first two minutes with me from the boxing range, then I get into the grappling area. I do have a couple of new tricks up my sleeve, and hopefully I can showcase them. What are your feelings about the heavyweight division? I mean, obviously, back when you had your had your first success in the UFC and get in that division, obviously it's a different landscape and different complexion. But when you look at the guys that are that are ranked around you, does it make you any more hungry than you were back then, as far as being able to get to get through and get to the top? Yeah, no, it's incredible. I think that right now the heavyweight division is the deepest most talented it's ever been i mean you go through i mean i think in the past if i had told you 10 years ago that the top 15 guys are all dangerous it would have been kind of a hard argument i would have been out and really try to stretch that one out (laughs) whereas nowadays i mean you have guys in the top 15 i mean uh, even guys that are you know ranked below the top 10 you know matt mitrion you know uh, sean jordan these are dangerous guys they're tough guys that you know 10 years ago if we'd have transported them in time caps and put them back then they'd have been forces to reckon with then it's just now you know moving up you have so many guys that are just great fighters. You, have, you know, obviously, Cain Velasquez, our champion, Fabrizio Verdum, Stipe, DJ, JDS, Alistair Overeem, 
Roy Nelson is still in the mix, and you know, you just have so many tough, great fighters. It's it, and it is. It's amazingly deep, and it's uh, when you start rattling them off like that, it does sound more imposing. But I'm sure at this point, you you I mean, you've you've never had a problem being focused on what's in front of you. And this you know step step one to get to those other steps is Andre Orlovsky this uh, Saturday night. You can see Frank Mir in the business office in the octagon at UFC 191 Saturday Vegas. You got to order that pay per view. You're, you're going to be very very happy. Hey, listen, even if Frank takes a guy out in 20 seconds, you're still going to get a show, right? But although I'm guessing, like you said, it wouldn't be Absolutely. bad to get a round or two underneath your belt just to be able to uh, to work out some stuff that you've been training so hard for. Do you, are you a film guy? Do you watch a lot of film in your opponent? Yeah, no, uh, I do watch a lot of film. We do a lot of studying on my fighter, uh, my opponents. You know, not only what they do in the octagon, but interviews they do outside the octagon. Try to get a state of mind and approach and. We try to game plan. We see what they've done best at, what their learning curve is, and what we you know, try to project what they're going to do. Well, Frank, thank you so much for your time, man. I can't wait to see you at work Saturday night. Get the pay-per-view, UFC 191. It's Mir and Arlovsky. Frank Mir, uh, I hope to have you back on the victory lap, man. Yeah, absolutely. You know, anybody can follow me on the Frank Mir on my Instagram, my fan page, my social media, you know, Twitter. And I'd like to thank you know, everybody that helps me in train for the fight and uh, trincotney.com. Hey, pleasure watching you. Can't wait for Saturday, man. Thanks again, Frank. Thank you.